a church is essential when pandemic started there were workers that were essential the hospital workers people emergency services government officials they were declared to be essential which we agree they are but i believe there's something else that's also essential and that is the church and i'm going to just share with you three things that i believe concerning the church number one is we believe in the church now a lot of people in our culture say they believe in god and that's good but we believe in the value and the importance of the local church on this earth our church is a movement but being a movement it does not belittle the need the value and the power of a local church why do we believe that the church is essential is because number one jesus is building the church he says i'm building the church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it number two jesus loves the church in ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 for those people who say that i love god but i don't like the church well you really have a difficult time connecting with jesus of the bible because he's building the church he loves the church and the bible actually says jesus died for the church now we know he died for the whole world but in Ephesians chapter 5 he says that he loves the church and he died for the church. Number three is number four is that the church is the bride of Jesus. The church is not Jesus's homie, crony or a side chick. The church is Jesus's bride. That's huge. Not only the church is Jesus's bride, the church is Jesus's body where he is the head and each one of us are members not only the church is Jesus's body Jesus's bride Jesus is building it but the church is also God's family the church not the whole world but the church is Jesus's family God's family the Bible says that we belong to the family of God and so we see all of these things they communicate to us that in this day and age where people are more likely to say I believe in God I just don't like organized um, structured religion we have to sound an alarm and herald the truth that the church is essential the church is valuable the church is important the second thing I want to highlight is not only we believe in the church at Hungry Gen, but we behave as a church. Come on somebody. Drop that in the chat. Behave as a church. Now at first thing it seems like, okay, Vlad's, now Vlad's going to give us a little moral lesson. We have to stop doing bad when we're walking outside of the church. It's about being the church, not meeting in the church. But it's actually a completely different approach that I'm going to present to you. The word church comes from the original language. In Greek, it means ekklesia which is actually an assembly somebody say an assembly so that means you are not a church unless you're an assembly let me say that again the idea that we don't go to a church we are a church is actually not scriptural scripturally speaking theologically and historically speaking the church is when we gather it's not when we scatter now are you still part of the body when you are outside of the gathering yes you are but theologically and scripturally you're only a church when you are an assembly not when you are separated for example it's like a car once all the pieces are assembled you have a car when you have a tire it's not a car each one of us are pieces and parts in the assembly when we're all separated we're not a church maybe believers maybe devoted to God but a church is when we are all assembled somebody say assembly come on drop that in the chat an assembly a church is an assembly according to 2021 survey 31 percent of Americans never attend a church or a synagogue compared to 22 percent of Americans who attended every single week a local church is an assembly if a church never meets it's not a church the meeting is not just something listen very carefully the meeting is not just something we do it's what church is God has saved us as individuals to be a corporate assembly that is why any government any king any dictator who comes against the gathering is coming against the definition of what the church is 
communists, fascists, Nazis, Nazis and all other isms that came all around, they all did one thing. They wanted the church to stop being the church by making it illegal for Christians to gather. If we stop gathering, we stop being the church. So the church, we believe in the church. We behave as a church by assembling. I like what Mark Merker said in his blog. He said, nine justices who serve on our nation's highest judicial body are in one sense regular people like you and I. They walk the sidewalks, they shop at local, local grocery stores. You might find yourself sitting next to one of them at the Washington Capitals hockey game or an opera at the Kennedy Center. They're all influential individuals on their own, of course, but in the deepest sense, they are who they are as an assembly. When the Supreme Court justices meet as a court to meet formal just judgments, they take on a unique joint identity. Together, they wield an authority far greater than the sum of their parts. Thus, lawyers introduce their remarks not by saying, may it please the justices but instead may it please the court singular the supreme court is a corporate institution one that depends on its nine members convening in space and time in a similar way god has designated the local church as a people who meet it does not work any other way i want to completely shatter the concept i am at church who does not gather as a church it's not scriptural I know it sounds cool on Instagram I know you can get really a lot of likes on Pinterest it's just not scriptural God says in his word that we should attend the church regularly in Hebrews 10 25 not to give up meeting together worshiping Jesus together is a powerful experience Jesus says where two or three are gathered in my name there I am among them Matthew 18 20. Paul is writing to churches to reg regularly gather together he would use phrase like when you come together as a church when the whole church comes together 1st Corinthians 11 18 and 1st Corinthians 14 23 Paul is also giving specific instructions on what believers should do in the church. He says, for example, don't speak in tongues in a microphone because people won't understand. Women should behave this way. Men should behave this way in a church gathering. Not as a church believers outside and home, but he also gives instructions on how to act in the actual church gathering. He also talks about discipline that is given in the church for example if one of the believers you know upholds heresy or creates a moral lifestyle that he doesn't want to repent and change he says present it to the church and let the church judge as a corporate body as an assembly so the view of the church in the new testament is it's a gathering it's an assembly not i'm an individual i don't care about organized religion i just serve god listen to podcasts read my favorite books and me and god are cool i just hate church if you have that approach you are deceived and you're lost i'm not saying you're not going to heaven i'm saying you're confused and you're not scripturally sound you may say well you're a pastor of course you're going to sell the church no i'm a christian who loves jesus and jesus died for the church and i'm going to advocate for the church come on somebody the food was sweet the message is strong <laughs> the last thing is belonging to a church so not only we are believing in the church as hungry gen we actually behave as a church by gathering together and number three is we belong to the church somebody dropped it in the chat i belong to a church say this with me belong to the church belong to the church usa church membership was 73 percent when it was first measured in 1937 73 percent of people in the united states in 1937 belonged to the church not just believed in God actually were a member at the church come on somebody Lord bring us back those numbers and it remained nearly 70 percent for the next six decades before beginning a steady decline around the sum of 21st century in 2020 so that's two years ago membership reached at all-time low of 47 percent now I'm gonna go after another sacred cow 
and this is the sacred cow I belong I in other words I go to the church I hate membership the idea of membership has a negative connotation in our culture we don't like memberships okay we just don't like memberships uh, because memberships there's just something about being a floater being free uh, nobody telling me what to do not having any commitments that our culture is extremely thrives on we love to live in my our parents basement and vote for people who can supply us endless supply of welfare checks and take care of us so we don't have to work we don't have to be responsible and so that the rich can make all the money and we take their portion so they share and distribute the wealth that is our mind Mindset. it's not biblical God wants us to work God wants us to be responsible and God wants us to have certain commitments in our life concerning the local church I'm going to advocate why every person who claims to be a genuine believer needs to belong to a church now you don't have to belong to hungry gen church I don't think everyone needs to belong to hungry gen church our church is wild our church is a little bit crazy with the spice of little Slavic, Hispanic and like so many other cultures that are here. So th there is a spice to Hungry Gen that some people find it too strong. <laughs> yeah. There's a sense of radicalism that Hungry Gen has. I'm not saying other churches are not like that, but they have a certain flavor. It's like ice cream. There's a chocolate, there's vanilla, and then there's strawberry, there's raspberry, and, and then there is like fat-free ice cream, and then there is all kinds of different ice creams. There's still ice creams. Tri-Cities has different flavors, and Hungry Gen happens to be that flavor that we are. You might not like Hungry Gen, but I just encourage you that you find something that you do like, and you belong to it outsiders say that church insiders say this church members say my church let me say again outsiders say that church insiders meaning you come you receive once in a while you give whenever you have the motivation or money that's extra this church but when you become a member it's my church so that's really one of the biggest differences another reason for that is that membership means ownership contribution and commitment a church is not a place I go it's a spiritual family I belong to now what about the Bible no, I understand the idea for membership it's good but Vlad is it scriptural to be a member of the church I'm so glad you asked that because in book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 41 it says those who believed what Peter said were baptized somebody say believed Believe. somebody say baptized. baptized and I want you to notice what it says and added to the church that day I want you to notice what it does not say it does not say and they were added to the kingdom they were so they believed then the next thing is they got baptized and then the third thing the Bible says they were added to the church it didn't say their names were added to the book of life that's obvious when you believe your name is added to the book of life when you get baptized you're telling the world I follow Jesus Christ but that is not what the Bible says in book of Acts when the early church started they were added to the church that is your proof that the church membership is biblical it's not just about believing and getting baptized and floating and church hopping it's about making a decision to be planted in the church that you feel like God is leading you at this season or at this time in your life it's not enough to listen to podcasts watch streams and hop around from one live stream to another while your kids are watching Pokemon in another room mm -hmm. those of you on live stream when there is literally 300 churches within your radius and say but no none of the churches are good enough but your kids are bench watching Netflix and while you are just on live stream now we have online church we love the idea for online church but nothing replaces the need to be a part of a local community especially when you have children they were added to the church let's read verse 30, 42 all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals including the Lord's Supper and to prayer so now they're believing they're baptized they're added to the church 
and the Bible says this is what they devote themselves to is to the teaching of the apostles so now this is where that comes in I'm listening to the teachings I'm listening to the word I'm coming to church on Sunday morning and as well I'm listening to the pastors preaching I'm listening to the Thursday stream of the preaching I'm also listening to the Wednesday stream I'm feeding myself with God's word I am fellowshipping with other believers and that happens through small groups I'm coming the first Sunday of the month because we're taking communion and to prayer I'm trying to make it at least to one prayer meeting a week which is Wednesday at six o'clock some of you like evening so it's Friday nine o'clock so there's a lot of prayer meetings that happens that's what believers did in the first church this was not a Sunday morning experience Sunday morning experience only it was added to the church devoted to the teaching devoted to the fellowship taking the Lord's Supper and devoted to prayer are you still with me do we need another round of uh, whatever that we were eating <laughs> are you still with me okay let's go a little bit further in verse 43 a deep sense of awe came over them all and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders so what this means is this a local church is not only a place where we fellowship where we study the word where we are added to the church but it's a place of signs and wonders a local church is a place where people are constantly falling in love with God not just because of the music but because of the miracles that they see demons are cast out the sick people are healed prophetic words are released the power of God is moving through the local church we are believing we are standing in this that not only on our Sunday mornings but throughout the week our ministry is at the forefront of the supernatural signs and wonders so many people were being healed on Friday during our Friday fire so many people were being delivered during our digital deliverance I mean demons coming out like nobody's business so many people being baptized in the Holy Spirit on Wednesday virtual service people will be getting saved today in the parks why because we are about the kingdom and the kingdom of God is signs and wonders we will never apologize for speaking in tongues we will never apologize for casting out demons we will never apologize for believing that God still heals today we will never apologize to believe and to stand in the fact that God still speaks today through visions dreams angels why because the church of Jesus Christ that he's building no gates of hell will prevail against it and if you are alive and breathing somebody say amen drop that fire emoji if you're watching us right now signs and wonders belong to the church today it's the glory of the church it's what distinguishes this distinguishes us from the social club amen the bible says after that verse 44 and all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had they sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need so that tells us not only we have the supernatural but we have radical generosity I believe this is what hungry gen is we're not for those of you who still struggle with the idea of tithing we're way past that way past that it's about radical generosity that means that we go above our means a lot of us live above our means God wants us to give above our means and it's not just we're bringing tithe to the church but we're also helping each other and those who are poor and to tonight a group of people is already flying to Mexico not only the finances that you guys gave toward the Mexican trip is going to be deposited but a lot of our people including me and my wife are taking the things that God has blessed us with and sending it there to find people that are in need so we can be a blessing why because we as believers are not just blessing our church we want to be a blessing through our church to those in need come on somebody the Bible says after that and just a few more verses verse 46 they worship together at the temple each day met in homes for the Lord's Supper and share their meals with great joy and generosity so that tells us there's two large two gatherings that believers were a part of temple the temple speaks of the church gathering it's larger and then homes and that's our small groups the early church operated like that and the church still operates like that our church is both large gathering on the weekend and then small gatherings throughout the week in small groups and they ate their bread with joy and gladness and the last verse verse 47 all while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all people and each day the Lord added to their fellowship I want you to notice that again the Lord didn't just add names to the book of life he actually added to the church people who were being saved 
And I believe this is what we're going for, is that we'll be praising God. We will have a good will in our community, meaning people will speak well of us, not because we're trying to please them, but because we're trying to serve our community. And God's going to be adding people daily to our church. That means we're going to numerically grow. It is God's will for the churches to grow. For those of us who may be like, I just want our church to stay small so I can remember and know each person. We will not be able to stay small if we're going to be a biblical church. God's going to start adding people by himself. But we're going to be also bringing new people to the church in Jesus' name. Amen. So we believe in the church. We will behave as a church by assembling ourselves together. And number three is we will belong to the church, meaning we will make an official commitment. Say, hey, I'm not just going to Hungry Gen. I am a part of Hungry Gen. I am not just visiting Hungry Gen. It's my church. I give to Hungry Gen. I serve at Hungry Gen. I pray for my church. When my church has a problem, it's my problem. When my church has a victory, it's my victory. I belong to that church. If Hungry Gen is not that church, find the one you can belong to and feel good about and have your children have their future in that church. And Hungry Gen is the best place to be. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this content and this was a blessing to you, would you help us and hit thumbs up so that it could help more people to discover this video. It costs you nothing, but it can go a long way to help with the algorithm. As well as if you're not subscribed to our channel, hit subscribe, click on the bell so that you can be reminded each time that we upload videos. Thank you so much for being a part of this community. If you're interested in learning more about Hungry Gen, our internship, our conferences, deliverance, and so many other things, go to HungryGen.com for more information. And as always, remember, better is not good enough, the best is yet to come.